awesome. Welcome everybody to this next round of the NRG coverage. It's round five. We have Jesse Robkin on your right playing the five color mid range rain to light deck versus Will Kruger on your left playing Lotus Field. We saw Will Kruger commentate with us yesterday. It was great to have him do the modern rounds with us. He mentioned, you know, hey, if I'm in the booth. If I'm on the, uh, the games, be nice to me or whatever. And Joe Lissette said no. You know, Joe like said, like we talked about, this isn't the person who decides what stock in Lotus Field. I'm sure Joe's watching. And after this round, he and Don will be in the booth, and they'll give you the feedback on Will Kruger's play. I, like I mentioned earlier, not a Lotus Field expert, but I know a lot about this period of the Abyss combo relative to the average person, which means I know how it works. Uh, and Kruger is the master at it. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he approaches this game. Yeah, I was going to say, Joe, if you're watching, make sure you write down every little thing that Will may or may not have done incorrectly, every small minute detail so you can kind of, you know, we can we can go over that next round. But uh, as far as the matchup is concerned, this is uh, five color mid range versus Lotus Field. Now, we saw Lotus Field versus the five color enigmatic deck earlier. We mentioned that that was kind of a, a tough matchup for Lotus Field. Um, the enigmatic deck didn't really have a ton of tools. It's really like more of a value oriented deck. Now, Jesse's deck is a five color, you know, value oriented deck. However, the wrinkle here for Will is bring to light with a main deck copy of Slaughter Games. Now, if we take a look at Will's deck list, there are some versions of the Lotus Field deck list that have something like a Fay of Wishes or um, the tutor that I'm forgetting the name of that searches your uh, searches your sideboard for a card. Um, but Will is absent of those cards. Will's deck list is so the, he might have a he might have the, a hard time beating the uh, Slaughter Games if it is to resolve. Yes, that is true. Also. Will Kruger named your deck list all other deck lists on Melee. As part of the commentary team, I'm going to need you to name your deck accurately for when we're picking future matches in the future. You know, But jokes aside, yes, uh, Kruger's deck, very similar to Conor Lally's deck that we saw just a couple rounds ago. Those two very close friends I know have worked together on this deck a bunch. Uh, as we are seeing Jesse sort of mulligan down here, and she knows, listen, my normal game plan is not good enough. I can't one for one against Kruger. These two are friends. They know what each other are playing. And just because I need to find slaughter games or some sort of, you know, heavy Sylvan carry added hand to try and get to there off the top. Right. Yeah. You're almost just in for Jesse's spot. She thinks that she kind of has to mulligan to a fast bring to light. And, you know, the cop, like you said, the scop is a Sylvan carry did mention or means that it can happen on turn four if she is able to kind of assemble that sort of combo. But yeah, and then from Will's side of things, just looking for as fast as a combo as possible, a fast Lotus field. Uh, some draw spells, hidden strings, stuff like that. So that is kind of the dynamic. Now, we, you know, we talked about bring to life for slaughter games past that. Not a ton. Jesse has a lot of bricks in her deck, like chain of the rocks and Leyline line binding. Not going to offer a ton up here. Stuff like extinction event and the sweepers not really doing much. Uh, Omnath is fine, but it's a little bit slow. So really, like you said, Jesse is, is almost all in on this bring to light game one. Yep. We're going to have to see if she can get that going in time in this matchup. Will Kruger, like we said, really well versed in the Lotus Field deck. And, you know, one of our most accomplished players, not only on our own circuit here with, you know, playing multiple player championships, being player of the year back in 2020, uh, but also winner of the mocks, the pro tour multi-time competitor, you know, works with some of the best players in the game. This is one of the most killer people you want to see. And playing a deck that he's really loves and passionate about is going to be extra hard because it's not like, you know, oh, Kruger's playing, he's good, you have to figure it out. This is a deck he loves to play and plays in his spare time. He's really working on innovating. Like you mentioned, this period of the abyss seems to be sort of his technology and something he's really taken to heart as we cast the impulse here. Yep. So, you know, both players just doing a little bit of developing for Jesse. No turn two carry did. That was probably what she was really looking for there. Uh, and then, you know, from Will's side of things, just cantripping, trying to find Lotus Field plus Thespian stage to assemble uh, the mana generation and casting a shimmer here potentially might have a copy. I think I just saw Field in that top four. So if he doesn't have a copy, he's going to have one now. Yep. So you're going to see Kruger double checking, making sure he has everything available to him that he actually wants to have. Also, for Jesse, you know, for turn three slaughter games, you have to have this turn two something carry added. But if she does have carry added to bring the light, it was going to be turn three no matter how she did it. So developing this triumph could be, you know, the right way for her to set herself up to succeed later off the top of her deck. We're going to see exactly how it goes here as Lotus Field gets played and sacks two of the lands. Yeah, this is the big turn for Jesse. No carry did. Okay, so we're not going to see a slaughter games next turn. And Will knows that as well. So Will knows that he even has one additional turn to develop here. Um, so, you know, I mean, likely just if he has this being stage, that's pr pretty much what he'll want to develop. Uh, maybe something like an upkeep. Yep, the player on Besaju. I like that. Um, 
Do you want to do it in upkeep to make Jesse use her mana in that particular phase? Give you know her less draw steps to find it. I mean, I guess she could theoretically just half of the slaughter games in hand. That is a possibility. Yeah. She might just be able to cast it. You know, she can name Pierre to the Abyss, and then Kruger's only way of winning, I'm sort of looking over his deck list now, is he can make a big lair of the Hydra, and then he can use hidden strings to tap down attackers, uh, blockers for the attacker. So Jesse's deck doesn't have that many creatures. So Kruger is really cold to slaughter games if it hits Lotus Field. Sort of can't really do anything to win from that position. But from this spot, might actually be able to still win here. Jesse activating a Fable Passage. If we grab a Swamp here, that might be a good sign that she has Slaughter Games in hand. We're setting up for one in the future. Her deck does play one of each basic. And now, question. Uh, she is getting the Swamp. What do you name? I think I named Pierre into the Abyss. Uh, just because I, I assume she knows about Kruger and the Pierre into the Abyss stuff. He loves to spread the good gospel. And so I think that's probably your best line of winning maybe you're supposed to name something like hidden strings i i'm really sort of unsure what exactly i would name in this spot my guess is that pier and Thibis on this build is better since there's only one actual winning condition besides the layer and then maybe you can beat the layer if it goes long enough but i'm, I'm not actually sure i'm curious to see sort of what she goes for if she does have it here and uh, she has a kiora oh, yeah all a mood point is we see a kiora no slaughter games here for jesse um, so, you know, like, like we said, she's playing for that bring to light next turn, but there's a, a very high likelihood that there isn't going to be an extra. Yeah. Turn. Yeah. And Kruger knows too, that bring to light could hit the slaughter games. So for him, he sort of knows he's under the gun, but also it's weird because we mentioned he can win with like, uh, layer of the Hydra. And if, you know, Jesse chooses the same thing, like, uh, well, we're pulling out mana. Kruger is not messing around. I was gonna say he <laughs> might try to just be like, listen, have slaughter games, whatever I can win without through this doesn't matter. Uh, and it looks like we're going to start floating mana. My understanding is, is typically this is the best way to start is to make the three black and the three blue. If you're someone at home interested, um, just because that lets you sort of, you have the two black for your ultimatum pre set up, and then uh, you can just, you know, make green off the last one there. So that's also why you see those players make that. And then also works with the dark petition uh, cycle here. And we're going to see what exactly is going on. Yeah. It looks like Will's going to make some more mana. Got a Vizier here, and uh, I, I I don't know if you saw this too, but we see Joe in the chat. So uh, again, Joe, oh, make nice. sure you uh, you take a look in, at every single move that Will's making here, and we can and you can discuss that with uh, with Tom next round. Yeah, if you just want to join Joe and just start, you know, yeah. inside where you just list them and then leave really quickly, that'd be great too. You know, we're happy to have you jump in the booth here for a second. You're gonna have Joe Lissa and Dom Harvey take you all home for the last three rounds of Swiss and the top eight once we're done here at this round. So that's exciting for your big fans of those guys. As we are going to cast a pour over the pages here, net us a mana and get a little bit more card selection going on. Scarting a grazer, don't need that one. Yeah, this is where uh, we're kind of just going through the motions at this point. You know, Will very likely is going to win the game this turn, but technically speaking, it's not deterministic. So we get we got to go through some of the motions. I assume once an ultimatum is put on the stack, Jesse will probably uh, will pack it up. But, you know, just want to make sure that we uh, we find that in theory, it could break, but not very likely. Yeah. And, you know, we found Dark Petition there. So I'm not sure what the take is. It's a little hard to see Will's hand, too. So this makes it a little awkward. I'm like, is Will whiffing or is Will just sort of, you know, casting spells as a way to, you know, make sure that when he casts the ultimatum, it's only for the cards he cares about. It's a little hard to know as we do see hidden strings here. I'm going to use some of the mana to untap our lands. Hidden strings stronger than dark ritual in the right context. True. <laughs> <laughs> only with Thespian stage. Yeah. And the old OD. As we're going to now cast Dark Petition, we're going to search our deck for a uh, instant sorcery put in our hand. And since we do have Spell Mastery, we're going to get Black, Black, Black added to our mana pool. That's going to help us cast the Emergent Ultimatum as we do see Kruger here float the green, then use all this mana and cast Emergent Ultimatum. Jesse's probably going to just make sure that, you know, Kruger has it. Also, Jesse might not know that Kruger's playing here this weekend. She might know Kruger's a big fan of it, but maybe Kruger didn't feel it was the right call for the weekend, you know, and sort of in paper versus right. moto, things are different. She might want to see what's going on here. Yeah, just want to maybe see what the actual win condition is. Make sure she uh, has all the information that she needs when we go to sideboarding here. 
So we see it was that Leer Omniscience Peer. So yeah, you're in a spot where if you give Will Peer Omniscience, he draws half his deck. Yeah, okay, that's it. We've seen enough. Yeah, and now Jesse does know, like we mentioned before here, that she is playing against the Peer version, which she's probably aware of. But also, you know, now she doesn't have to worry about like, oh, Mastermind's Acquisition, Faye wishes those sort of cards. So that is going to sort of change the dynamic up here. But yeah, sort of as expected without the Slaughter Games, the sort of five-color decks can't really compete with the Lotus Field deck in game one outside of having that sort of thing. So no real surprise there. Let's check out the sideboards, though, and see what each player is going to be doing to try and convert uh, their game into their favorite postboard. We're going to see Jesse Robkins' deck here. Uh, she has three Rending Volleys, two Pithy Needles, two Dove and Vitos, two Reckoner Banquester, two Rest in Peace, two Stroke Lavinia, and Gigantha the Wellspring. What do you like here? So if, uh, as we said, if Jesse is aware of the specific version that Will is playing with the uh, the loop of the peer, and so basically for people in chat who may not know the loop, it's ba you essentially cast peer, loop it with Balagid recovery a couple times. Now, as we discussed in the previous matchup, that loop does kind of get broken up by rest in peace. So I, I mentioned Jesse wants to go towards those, probably the pithing needle, because if you have it on turn you know, early in the game, you can name Despian stage to prevent that from copying a Lotus Field. Dovin's Veto, Disdainful Stroke, very good at countering uh, pure, excuse me, the Peers, the Ultimatums, and the Dark Petitions. And then Lavinia, I think, is pretty good because that one breaks up the Emergent Ultimatum. Um, it's a little narrow, but it does stop the Ultimatums. Well, it stops the Ultimatum, and you can't cast spells if you can... Uh, that, oh, you know, right. With more lands you control. So yeah. the early cantripping stuff we can cast really easily, but the big payoff cards are not going to be able to do there. So... Pretty good little tech card she has in that sideboard slot. Let's check out what Will Kruger's going to have. Because like we talked about, you know, we mentioned this in the earlier rounds, how Joe said, you know, we decided, we were talking about who decides what stock is Lotus Field. Joe, we decided you, uh, we think you made some big innovations in the RC. And having this real sort of sideboard is one of those big innovations. So we have two Terra Center, two Hope Tinder, two uh, Depopulate, two Zakama, two Fading Hope, Behold the Multi, Behold this, to be honest, sorry, Ritual of Soot, Elder Gargoth, Dragon Ball Dromica, and Sphinx of the Final World. Hmm. So I'm not a Lotus Field mm -hmm. expert, but my guess is that we want to bring in some additional threats specifically against the Slaughter Games. Now, I'm not sure which of these threats you want to go towards because there's a plethora of them here. We have Elder Gargaroth, Dragon Lord Jamoka, Sphinx, Zakama. Um, so any of those options to sort of kind of sidestep and play around that Slaughter Games, I'm not sure which one of those are best. Likely Zakama offers you a little bit more utility and maybe something like a either the Sphinx or the Dramoka or Gargaroth is probably the weakest of the bunch. So some combination of those um, Terra Sunder to blow up rest in peace and pithing needle in the post board game seems pretty good. And do you have any idea what this behold the beyond is doing in the sideboard? Talk to me about that. So behold the beyond is a card that you see them go for an emergent ultimate and wish piles. It seems like Kruger has decided to put and some of the hope tenders in the main deck. We saw, you know, uh Lally earlier. So they had uh, one voyaging Seder in the main three hope tenders in the side. Kruger has two Hope Tinder main, two in the side. So those are four of the very similar effects. It looks like he's trying to just have a little bit more speed in game ones and has given up on a card that's more combo-oriented. So I'm going to imagine there are specific matchups where you really want to behold the beyond, where maybe something like Hope Tinder or some other uh, cantrip card isn't quite as good. So I'm going to imagine that's sort of the point. And I, I sort of agree with your analysis there. I think Zakama is the one that makes the most sense since it can blow up cards like Rest in Peace, which can be problematic there. So we might just see multiple, though, because we did see Connor bring in, you know, Elder Gargaroth uh, against the Bring the Light deck. I'm sorry, the, the Incarnation deck in the earlier round as we are drawing up our hands here for game number two. Will Kruger had a Terra Sunder in his opening hand there. Uh, so he has, you know, come prepared, knows that Jesse, A, knows his deck really well, and B, knows that Jesse knows. So, you know, he's going to make sure to have the right cards here as Jesse looks to be excited. She's kept seven and Kruger's going to six. You know, every little bit helps. And uh, both these players, you know, uh, are battling it out here. They are not dead for top eight. They still are alive if they can win out from here. So two, one, and one. Right. And as we talked about this being the first event of the season, um, a lot of the, you know, the energy points on the line. So these players are definitely going to want to play, you know, even if you just need top 16, uh, because I have to imagine that both of these players are going to be playing if, if not all of them or most of the, uh, the upcoming energy events. So the points definitely matter a lot for these players. Yeah, we saw that kind of with Connor Mullally, right? He just barely beat Jesse last year because he played every event and Jesse didn't, you know, and playing those little events, getting those top 32s versus dropping is make or break of the player of the year races. We do see a planes. Uh, Jesse has a turn to play. Looks to be still going to carry added. Her man, it comes to play untapped. Lucky for her there. 
We'll see if we maybe see a turn three slaughter games, perhaps. I mean, you know, draw, the turn two carried it into the turn three naturally drawn slaughter games. That's probably how they, that's you want to draw it up like that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Slaughter games is not it's just straight up non land, right? Not non basic. Yeah, non land. OK, because mm. I know that some of those cranial extraction effects can name like lands, but not basic lands, you know, so it's, mm. it, you always got to make sure we get, get the right text on that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, you know, some players, well, for this one, it's, you just name a, yeah, non-land card, but yeah. So like you can just, you know, grab the peers, the strings, all those sort of cards or something they can actually do. This is, I've seen some people want to play um, things like Necromantia because it can, I believe Necromantia is the one that can name lands. There, yeah. there are a lot of different of these variants and having the right one for the right problem is pretty good. This one's sort of uncounterable. So it's also good against control decks where your deck kind of suffers, where you can actually just name their win conditions and then, you know, work from there. Yeah, and we see a, a Pithing Needle here from Jesse, very likely naming Thespian Stage. I don't really think there's too mm -hmm. much else. Um, you know, theoretically, if you've maybe extracted other win conditions from Kruger's deck, maybe you could get into a spot where later in the game you would want to name Layer, but early on, you're almost always going to want to name uh, Thespian Stage. Big agree there. So we do see Kruger sort of taking a moment to think here. He's looking to cast a Sylvan Scrying. We might see something like Boseju get grabbed here to answer the Pithing Needle. That's part of the, you know, big innovations in these decks is and big uh, new cards is just Boseju as a tutorable answer to half your problems. You know, you play three, four Boseju's in your deck. You've got to answer to half the hate cards that people bring in against you. Yeah. Now, okay. So with the Sylvan Scrying last turn, I'm guessing that one got the stage. I think that one got the field. Yeah. The well, the second one did. So the, the, he, he didn't get two fields, did he? Oh, I thought the first one. I I must have been mistaken. I'm not sure he grabbed them. To be honest, I thought he grabbed field. Okay. I saw. I thought I saw Lotus Field get revealed, but regardless, yeah. I mean, Kruger. I'm going to guess if he didn't pick up a Besaju here, just either doesn't care about Thespian Stage or had it rolled up. Yeah. So we are going to okay. see a Bring the Light get cast here for all five colors. I'm assuming. So Jesse can search through her deck and try and find something to play. Yeah. Now, and then here's the question we talked about last game: If you get the Slaughter Games, what are we naming? Oh, we're going for Valky. Yeah, okay. she's going to try winning the game here. Valky, it's a creature on the front side, but because of the way this card works, you actually get to put Valky on the stack, and you can cast it for Tibble on the back side if you want. So that's Valky God Allies, but we want to Tibble the Cosmic Imposter on screen. So that is most there likely is. what Jesse is doing. Yes, so this Tibble lets you play cards as of the manner of any color they're exiled by Tibble's ability, and then Tibble starts exiling cards. So Jesse might just be doing this because she's like, listen, I don't think Slaughter Games is going to actually do anything right now, or has it in hand, and just wants to get the Tibble on board to sort of you know work through and try and win the game. And I remember the uh, the time in modern when you used to be able to put this card into play on turn. Well, I, as early as turn zero. So most of the time, turn one or turn two. I don't know if you uh, if you got to play that deck at all a little bit. It was uh, unbelievable, to say the least. <laughs> it might be one. Of the, it might be one of the most broken decks in modern history that no one ever talks about. Um, and uh, Valky finding is a combo here. I wow. mean, we could just cast that. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah, but... like we gotta need a little bit more lands, but that could come up. Just needs some way to win. Also, hitting the Zakama, if Jesse does have Slaughter Games or something like Pier, that could be the end of the game. You know, that Zakama will just block True. an opposing Zakama. So, War could be the only yeah. one. We don't know how many Kruger brought in. Yeah, it really all depends on. Oh, we got the we got the land out. No way. This so early? It looks like we're gonna cycle the vizier here. This might be a situation where Kruger's doing it for coverage and is gonna maybe answer a pithing needle and then move on with the day. We're going to have to see exactly what the plan is. We just played Boseju for a turn, so that means we did have access to Boseju as we play a pour over the pages, found another Boseju there, saw that one for sure. So Kruger does have access to answer the needle whenever he finds the stage and wants to do it. Looks like he's thinking. And, and I'm looking over here. I wonder I wonder what Jesse had in her deck to actually like pressure and put lethal towards the board. So I'm starting to wonder if maybe you're just supposed to get Omnath mm. or something because this Valky... Yeah. Because, like you said, looking at the deck list, there's not. Uh, I mean, Valky, it doesn't pressure. It, does, it doesn't like actually go after Will's life mm -hmm. total. But playing towards the ultimate does provide a good amount, of, good amount of value. Although, I mean, even if you ultimate the Valky, you get a bunch of like Sylvan Scryings and Vizier of Tumbling Sands for to cast off the Valky, which doesn't really accomplish too much. But yeah, I mean, Jesse's really only pressure here, like to actually pressure Will's life total in that regard, is Omnath. So, yeah, outside of that, there's not really a ton else. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see sort of what she's going for here. She maybe has Lavinia rolled up in hand, too, and that's, like, why she's doing this. Uh, 
there's a lot of different reasons why we'd be going over here. And we're going to see the Rosage go after the Pithy Needle. That means Thespian Stage can be named again in the future, or activated in the future. And Jesse's going to get a land for it, which, funny enough, Jesse has five lands in play with two carry items. That's seven. We're only two lands away from this uh, Zakama in exile. <laughs> Which is, I mean, so what's the exact text? It untaps all of your lands, right? When it yes. comes to play, yeah, ETB okay. untap all lands you control. Uh, gotcha. amulet players play this for a little bit, blowing up artifacts or enchantments. I don't think that's too relevant against Will's deck. I guess you can like break up an omniscience turn, but Will can easily, Will can play around yeah, that. That's something that seems beatable to me. I'm not positive, yeah. but it does seem beatable, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Let's see, Jesse fetched here, grabbed the swamp. We might just see Jesse do something like slaughter games into Lavinia this turn, right? Like if she didn't grab Lavinia, which is something she could have done off Bring the Light, which would have turned off, you know, essentially a lot of what Kruger could have been doing if it was scarier. Makes me wonder if she just has it. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. Like that's a, you bring up a good point there. Like I feel like if she had either Lavinia or Slaughter Games, maybe you wanted to go towards that. So there is a, a very high likelihood she has one or both of those cards in hand. If and if she has both, that might just be lights out. If you combine both of those cards with the active Valky, that might be really yeah. Tough you have an impulse into Omnath, so that Omnath's gonna be pretty good there. Jesse used her fetch land last turn. Might have another one in hand though. Can't use the swamp for the Omnath. Oh, actually, maybe you can because of Tybalt, because Tybalt does some weird things with casting my spells. Is yes. weird. Yeah. So. Yep. You can cast the spells with any yeah. color. Nice. We get that's a little bit of you know. We got a fable, little fable passage action here to get some mana. So we're gonna get some Omnath mana. That'll be access to eight total mana. Um, you know, potentially if Jesse has another copy of Bring to Light. And maybe the other thing is maybe she had another Bring to Light rolled up and felt like she oh she's gonna cast impulse. Okay. I was gonna say maybe she has another bring to light rolled up and felt like she wasn't gonna die. <laughs> it's a mana. I feel like she wasn't gonna die that turn. So figured it she was like, get it's okay to get the tip off that turn, and then with the second bring to light, she can get the hate piece to fall. Yeah, that turn. makes a lot of sense. Kruger being like, hey, I guess what? I didn't bring these things to not use them on coverage. <laughs> We're going to see the top four here. I think I saw a rest in peace. Yeah, that's going to be good for answering the pure kill. We also, we, we used one Besage on board and we used another one there. So there's a moment where maybe you can assemble enough of a house of cards that, you know, Kruger can't fight through them all. Typically, given enough time, you can beat anything, but. Although I will say one awkward part about this rest in peace, if you're planning to if you're planning to ultimate the Valky next turn, you actually lose access to the bring delight off of the Valky, oh. which makes this 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 Valky a little bit the prop Valky proposition a little bit more dicey. That is true. Yeah, and then you have to replay the so needle. maybe maybe just wait a turn. Yeah, maybe she wants to grab the rest in peace for next turn at the turn after you know ultimate the Valky and then play the rest in peace. Yeah, it looks like she cycled a triumph there, figuring out what she wants to do. She just wants to actually play the rest in peace now. Okay. Maybe think she has enough going on that she doesn't. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can you can also still just go up with the the tip ball too, mm -hmm. and you have the Zakama there with three, six, eight. So land lets us play Zakama. Yeah, we have a Thespian stage here, and Kruger is going to. Yeah, he's pulling out the stuff. That is not a good sign if you're a Jesse Robkin fan because you know Kruger was maybe just activating the Lotus Field. I'm sorry, the Thespian stage become a Lotus Field here to dodge. Besage you, that would make a lot of sense, but Kruger would not pull out the swamp and the force if that was happening. And it does look like we're gonna cast hidden strings, untapping those two lands. And now Kruger has access to the you know the main part of his deck. He doesn't have his graveyard, and like we talked about before, with the peer combo, he needs to be able to pick up the peers from the graveyard, so he can't get the peer into exile without being able to win off Sakama. And all the hidden strings and things he loses might make it harder for him to actually win. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the deck list here. So we got three Besages, two Odawaras, and then obviously the sideboard. Where do we the what was the Terra Sunder? Terra Sunder was the sideboard card. Which didn't you mention? Uh, he had a tech copy of Terra Sunder a while back, right? Yeah, but it might have been the hand he mulligan at the start. I'm unsure. Okay. okay. I just, at the first hand I saw his definitely had Terra Sunder. So Hope Tender, a couple lands there. 
Yeah, because as long as Will can get this rest in peace off the battlefield without, you know, before casting the peer or exiling the peer, everything, you know, he should he should be good to go. And uh, does have a decent amount of answers, plus the Sylvan Scryings, which you can also find beside you. So realistically has upwards of, you know, eight to ten answers to this rest in peace. Yep. Looks like hidden strings again. Yeah, it looks like the real question is going to be less about if Will can answer the rest in peace and more can Will go finish going off from there with the amount of damage rest in peace is done. The answer is right. probably yes, if it's especially if it's like right now ish, but it is definitely not a given. Yeah, and then notably, Will has three copies of Balagad. Now, I know that you had mentioned that you uh, you talked to Will about the combo. Do you know you know exactly how many Balagads do you need to oh, have remaining God. before you can go off? I'm pulling okay, it up. I shouldn't hang, ask that hang question. On, hang on, I got like here this. I, I read I read a guy <laughs> recently that like explained this. I want to say every Balagad loses you like eight or something damage i can't remember exactly i'm gonna pull it up real quick because i have it over here on my computer and let's be honest twitch chat we're just kind of vibing together right now you know um i thought yeah, i was just computer. doing this thing huh i don't know where i went all right well i'm gonna sort of half look for that while i'm talking here but we got ultimatum you're probably gonna see the grabbing of the normal stuff. So, okay hang on i have found the guide i'm scrolling i think i'm scrolling okay Step one. Okay. The number of peers to cast. So what I'm seeing here is a graph that says one peer beats them at one card in deck, as you might guess. Four peers beat them at eight to 15 cards. Five peers beat 16 to 31. And then six peers beats 32 to 63 cards. Okay. So that means he's going to need to cast peers six times on his opponent. If I am understanding this graph correctly, if Jesse has 32 or more cards, which means we have to go peer Cast it uh, with the Balagates three times. That's four. And then and have then a Balagates be from hand. Back to Balagates. Yeah. And then that should win from there. That is my understanding. Yep. I uh, I actually, I, it's, this is a Google Doc that I'm reading off of. I just saw three people hop on. I wonder how many of them are in the Twitch chat actually here looking <laughs> at the same guy that I am. Uh, hello to y'all. Uh, <laughs> but yes, that seems to be the case. I'm actually going to scroll down and see if there's a, a thing for life totals. I guess life totals is very similar too. You know, you do 20, you go to 10, then five, and then three, and then two, and then... So you need to have five, I think, to do lethal with the deck. Oh, okay. Well, there, that's it, actually it, less than, right? Yeah, well, so, so you, but we just said 21. So that would be... Oh, oh, right. So it's going to be the same, I think, if I did that math correctly there. God, that so, one life. <laughs> yeah, that one life is really mattering. Obviously, you know, casting it on them is a little bit harder, too, because you don't get all the extra cards, but yeah. Yeah, so Will is resolving this ultimatum. Now, what do we... I see a Terra Sunder. I believe that's a Peer. I can't tell what that blue card is. I'm honestly not sure either. I'm going to guess it's poor of the pages because it kind of looks like Jace. Yeah. So if you give... Huh. I wonder... Oh, so Will might just have an answer rolled up to the rest in peace in his hand. Because my thinking was, if you give Will poor peer, oh, oh so, so what Will can do, even if Will doesn't have an answer to the rest in peace rolled up, he can stack it so where you go resolve the poor first and try to dig for an answer to the peer. Because if the peer resolves, it gets exiled off the rest in peace, right? I think so, yeah. It also huh. could be a situation where Kruger is just like, has knows he has another Zakama and it's just gonna worry about it. It also may be a spot where, and usually this happens sometimes, Kruger knows Jesse is smart, knows that Jesse knows Pierce how he's gonna win and might put it back into the deck, right? But if Jesse, if he uh Kruger maybe didn't want that to happen, right? Like it could be a spot where he's counting on Jesse not letting him have that. Right. I don't know for sure, but that it's definitely a, sometimes when you're sort of forced in positions where you can't win through normal means, that's a play you might have to do. I'm not saying that is the case, but it could be a case here as Poor of the pages does get cast on tapping two. Uh, and Terra Sunder is now in the graveyard. So now from this point, I'm curious what Joe Lissette has to say about the play and everything. We'll see that soon <laughs> enough. But we should probably be able to win. I think we used like three hidden strings. I was half tracking. Obviously, I started looking up the data on poor of the appearance. Oh, I think it was there. three. Yeah, okay. So that means we have one left. And I think we have, we used two pours. So we have two pours. So the question really is, all right, can we do it? 
from here. And then dark petition, we do have spell mastery. Yeah, so now we just go petition. We have eight. We have eight mana. So we can't actually petition and peer with enough mana to floating to cast strings. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So maybe we'll see what Will's going for here. Oh, we have another strings. OK, so now now if he tutor for peer, now we can peer with enough mana floating. This should be good enough. Yeah, then you don't have your deck. That's probably enough for Cougar to win. Well, Will's got a, a small-ish remaining library, so maybe, I don't know. It depends on what, what's left over in Will's deck. And if we assume correctly, that actually might be the fourth hidden strings. Hmm. Yeah, and we might not be able to untap enough. That's what I'm thinking, too. We might not be able to make enough mana. Are if we... that is the fourth strings. Yeah, and so we resolved it. I'm not gonna lie. This version is a lot harder to follow and track if you've never seen it before. If you ever yeah, played it, is. I I miss the days of approach of the second sun. I know this game would have been over by now if we'll just had approach. Yeah, <laughs> but he would have had more clunky cards in his main deck, and that is the big difference. Twitch, you're curious, yeah. like why do all of this? Kruger doesn't have a bunch of clunky tutors in his deck. He just has his one win condition, and so right. that gives him a little bit of extra space for more cards. Chat's asking about the Zakama. The Zakama was hit off of the Tibalt. So that yes. is under Jesse's Tibalt. The Tibalt is the thing with the nine dice on it above Giganta. Yep. So Jesse, not much respect for the game, puts on top of Tibalt's art. Someone worked really hard to draw that card, and Jesse just never looks at the art. Makes you wonder about what she's doing with her life choices like that. See, it even if you take it out of the sleeve partially, so then you put the dice on that por the portion of the sleeve. Yeah. That you, put, you know what I mean? That's like perfect. That that's moderately played by my book. <laughs> <laughs> As we are going to see, cursory go through it here, and it really is. I wish I could give you more information, chat, but we're all kind of just vibing right now to see if it goes. Yeah, on. we're just yeah. chilling. We're just hanging out. I'm, you know, we could we can start talking about standard too if you want to just start yeah. start talk, talking about other stuff. Let's, let's are you watching good shows recently? Seeing any good movies? Um, no, not really. I'm not really okay. into shows too much. I, I don't have a lot of time after streaming and all that. Sure. Yeah. Working a lot on content. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Coaching takes up like most of my day and I have a couple hours left. I'm trying not to just do magic all the time. You know, I'm trying to have, be a yeah. person too. Yeah. So I hear that. Socialize. Yeah. yeah. Now, if only I had friends to socialize with, then it would be so much <laughs> easier. But, you know, <laughs> Jesse here doing her thing. Yeah, like I said, you know, like you, you will and Jesse, we're all just vibing. Yeah. Just having a good time. This is why I'm against Lotus Field on coverage. <laughs> <laughs> you did mention yeah, that earlier. I, I did try to save us from back. I knew I knew a Lotus Field player would do well, too, because the deck's so powerful right now. I was like, well, we're going to have to see. Yeah. Like, do we have to cover them early? I'm down to see Player of the Year, Will Kruger versus Jesse Rockman are running up in the Player Championship. Two great players, but... It is a moment of, you know, oh, no, what are we doing? But, you know, that's okay. Magic is sweet in its own way, and there are all these cool things we could do. Also, if Kruger whiffs on this, which I have no clue how close he is to whiffing or not. Uh, Wait, Jesse are we going to discard it? Yeah, Jesse just... We're oh, going look to at discard. Oh, holy. holy. Wait a minute. So, so we did whiff. <laughs> we have a second rest in peace in the deck. There's no Zakama. Nothing that happened. Even if we did Zakama... Jesse has more mana. Jesse has her own Zakama. She can exile it with the Tibalt. She's looking at the cover. She's looking around. She's like, is this murder? Am I getting away with it? What's going on here? Hey, Jesse can Jesse's gonna ult the Tibalt and cast her own peer into the abyss. <laughs> can Jesse combo kill Kruger yeah. with the peer abyss? <laughs> yeah, because wow, I don't that, think Will had that many cards left in his library. Oh my goodness. Well, also, that it just was... does half the damage, right? So it's just a oh, fireball. Yeah. That's true. So, That's true. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And Kruger just realizes he can't win with what's going on. He's just going to concede. Oh, oh my gosh. That's, you know what? That's, I'm glad we just vibed and said because it's way cooler that way. <laughs> what a wild thing. And this is sometimes something that can happen. You know, the peer into the abyss is a lot cleaner, a lot more neat, but, and it isn't a deterministic kill like the other one. So sometimes you give up this and this happens one in a hundred games. But luckily we caught one of those hundred games on camera here. So that's going to be exciting. To honestly go back and rewatch it and see just how close was he. You know, if he had one more strings, could he have done it? I'm not sure on the mana. It's a really big 
graphs and timetables and everything. You know, when I first started playing Magic Devon, players said uh, to play Doomsday, you had to read this 100-page article, you yep. know, about how to play Doomsday and everything. And I feel like Lotus Field is only like a 3,000, a 30,000-word article. Excuse me. But still, it might be able to appear into the Abyss version. You need to have a brain as big as the Abyss to really play it masterfully, which Kruger does have, but it can still fall apart. Right. The brain can only contain so much knowledge. And, and you know, there's an old saying, that's why we play the games. You know, there is a, a somewhat deterministic kill, but it's not actually deterministic at the end of the day. And uh, like you said, we saw that 0.001% happen. Um, but, you know, if maybe Will had seen, had had one extra hidden strings or one extra source of extra mana, uh, something could have something could have changed, but realizes he was just dead to, uh, to that. And uh, we're right back into game number three. Yeah, it looks like these players are playing quickly. They both have a draw. Kruger actually drew against this deck in round one. They both know another draw. They're only going to die, so they're playing quickly here. We see just a land go from Kruger into a land for Jesse Say go off the field passage. Cast a uh, Sylvan Scrying. I believe grabbed Lotus Field there. If it wasn't Lotus Field, it was Desmond Sage or Besaidu. That's typically the three they grab, since those are just Lotus Field, Lotus Field number two, and then answer to hate card. So as we see here, as Jesse plays, is Sylvan Carry added off a of shock from the Temple Garden. Yep, in turn two carried it. That is, as we talked about, very, very important for Jesse, especially when she's in the draw, because, you know, if Will does something, like, say, next turn, Thespian stage copy, that's going to be the window for Jesse to be able to go bring to light slaughter games. And, um, you know, Will knows about that. So, you know, we saw the Zakama pro sport for, for Will in game two. So is, you know, aware of that and does have the additional win conditions necessary. Um, but we'll see what, uh, what Jesse's follow up is here. Looks like we're tapping some mana. Also, Pithy Needle here, and probably named Thespian Stage. How insane, though. Can we talk about, too, the fact that the Temple hit the Zakama mattered so much. Yeah, especially, we, yeah, we don't know for certain if Will brought in, uh, if brought it, Will brought in the second copy. But if he didn't, then, uh, well, I'm guessing he, he probably didn't, right? Yeah. And we are going to see Jesse here cast Lavinia. That's going to make it harder for Kruger to cast cards like Pour of the Pages. So Kruger's still going to be able to cast his two drops really easily. And then he's going to activate Lair the Hydra. And Jesse seems to have missed that the Lair was played there. And now Kruger's going to immediately snap take that trade. Heads Ooh. up play from him. Yeah, that's a rough one there. Just that is a trade that Will definitely would want to make. <laughs> yeah, as I think Jesse though does have slaughter games in her hand. So yeah, she can name hidden strings here or pour over the pages. She can also name peer into the abyss a lot. Yeah, she see her sort of tanking here. You know, she's sort of in a very awkward spot now. We're gonna, we're gonna see what she names by you know what's going through here and taking out of the deck. Looks like there's a pour in the hand, so it wasn't pour that we took. It might just be the one peer into the abyss. Yeah, two copies of Besaju. Is that just is that two Besaju's Botanical Sanctum Stage Odawara peer? Yeah, so just all ends yeah. at a peer. Um, but, you know, Will does have the answer to the needle, which we're assuming is naming stage, as mm -hmm. well as the um, the thespian stage. OK, naming naming strings is actually kind of good, because as we talked about last game, which we saw towards the end of the game, Will needs a certain number of, you know, strings and mana to be able to go off with the peer stuff. So, yeah, this this makes a lot of sense from Jesse's side of things. Yeah. And also, you know, Jesse now just buys a bunch of time, right? There's a bunch of things Kruger can use to answer time, but he, like you mentioned, the 1% stuff does come up more and we sort of take them apart. And now, you know, we're just got a real chance. And if Jesse gets Valky, you know, the ultimate lets her do this again. So we saw her go for that in the first game. Maybe that's part of her plan. I, if I was Jesse, my plan would be to hit Valky and just keep hitting the win conditions. Then Kruger can't win. Because we beat the lair, we traded the Lavinia, and now, you oh, know, yeah. we got that one done. And Will's only on one layer, so the layer's down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she did take a look at the deck list to know exactly what the other creatures that Will brought in. Because we mentioned Will had quite a few creatures in his sideboard. There's the Sphinx, the Dramoka, the Gargaroth, and the two Zakamas. Now, you know, you and I don't know exactly how much Will brought in. Jesse is now aware of that information. So she knows exactly what wind conditions Will has left now that those hidden strings are gone. And the combo aspect of things is no longer on the table. Yeah, we are going to see Jesse here cast Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Gonna get the old Fable going. Fable. Mm -hmm. Let's see, if Jesse has a follow up here. Look at Jesse's deck list. We had some counter spells here. We had a couple Dovin's vetoes, which she and single strokes here too. So if she has a copy of those in hand, she knows about the um, the the power of the pages. Those would be good to hold up too. 
Yeah, this could be a spot where Jesse just sort of, you know, chip shot Kruger down, got out of the hidden strings instead of the poor. It's the only way to really generate extra mana. And that's not the best way to generate extra mana. That is like only nets you one. So it's going to be really hard for it to do much more than select a bunch. Now, if you get a Leer into play, you can sort of chain them off a little bit. But that is a big ask because Kruger plays. So that's when Sage passed the turn. There's still a Besage in place. So Jesse knows, Jesse knows that she cannot, I'm sorry, that Kruger cannot copy the Lotus Field until the time comes. We got a little rummage action. Players playing quickly here. Looks like we discarded Sylvan and carry out it. They know that time is going to be a factor. They don't want to get any more draws. Right. And if we take a look at, there's, okay, 14 matches left. I think we can probably find out how much time. I don't know if we can see yeah, time. Yeah, behind the but... scene producer might tell us. As Fable the Mirror Breaker, number two, that's actually going to be a great way to win because Jesse will have all this mana laying around. She can just yep. make a bunch of copies of Fable and win the game here. Yep. We have about nine minutes left in the round, so our players are playing briskly, but still plenty of time to come to a natural conclusion of this match. It looks like we're going to see Boseju hit the pithing needle. Uh, it looks like... pointing at Gigantha. Uh, I don't know why we're pointing at Gigantha. Not maybe that's sure. just a little joke. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Kruger accidentally <laughs> Kruger pointed to Gigantha with the Boseju, and Jesse was like, "Did you mean Fable, or did you mean this?" Kruger goes, what? And she goes, you pointed to Gigantha. And he's like, oh, sorry. That could be a very reasonable thing that happens. Because, you know, from Jesse's point of view, you know, maybe he wants to blow that up. All right. Now we'll have to see. We're going to we're gonna do a little bit of vibing here, but we'll have to see. Um, well, first of all, does Jesse have a counterspell for this poor? If so, Will doesn't really have much left. Um, if she doesn't, and there's the Dovid's Veto. Okay, Will's turn is basically, well, maybe stopped here. Two black floating. There's not really a ton else he can do. Play out this Odawara. Looks like he's yeah, thinking about it. The, the Odawara is a great way to actually stop the Fable from killing you right away, as is the Besaju. So curious to see if Kruger was going to keep one of those to break it up, since that does seem the quickest route to defeat right now is two turns from now. Those all getting copied. Looks like he's going to keep the Odawara but play the Besaju. Without the hidden strings, he does also have to get the lands in play, and he is one mana, I guess, away from Zakama. Uh, so if he draws that, he could play it. That is a good point. Yeah, so three, six, seven, eight. Will just has the combo rolled up. That could be a potential possibility. Jesse's already used the slaughter game, so we can't go, we can't go towards that. Excuse me. Um, so if we, maybe we have bring to light here. What are we uh, looking for, Jesse? So we've we've exhausted the slaughter games. We've exhausted the uh, Lavinia. So past that, we got like an. Um, I mean, probably just Valky at that point, right? You can Valky. You can grab. Um... I guess Omnath isn't the worst. Honestly, Elishnorn might be okay because it makes them not untap the lands if you have like other ways to kill stuff. And then all your that's actually double. a good point. Looks like we yeah. have a yeah. Gigantha getting played here just is a five five, and that's gonna be on the next turn. Not a good matchup here for Jesse Robkin. This is one that she's not super excited to play against. But luckily, she did draw some of her powerful sideboard cards. Will Kruger had Odawara in hand. It was floating six mana, ripped a Vizier of Tumbling Sands, going to untap the land, knows that he is basically done for, so he has to go for it this turn if he's going to go for it. Ultimatum, and there's mm -hmm. another counter spell from Jesse. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. getting the Dovin's Veto on that ultimatum might be lights close to lights out. It, was, it looks like Kruger did have one more card in hand we just couldn't see. It looks like it was a Hope Tender. Right now, the uh, the thing for Jesse here is, can she present a lethal attack? So we have Gigantha, two Fable tokens, and we have the potential reflection that can attack. So you figure block the reflection. That is nine damage. That puts Will to five. Removal spell, that's 11 damage, put Will to three. So I'm not convinced that Jesse can deal lethal damage this turn. So we'll have to, we'll have oh, to see where she wants to go. She does have Reckoner Bankbuster, though. Uh, I don't think she's okay. able to screw that up and then make a, make a copy and crew and the new one but she can draw a card probably just took it out for some of her chain to the rock cards that just are not very good maybe left like a uh, ley line binding in but yeah now she can attack here get two treasures attack for nine and then you know end of turn we can make copies of kiki jiki and we have all this mana up so kruger's gonna need to win this turn we might just see a no block here so the hope tender can stay in play for kruger looks like kruger's a little confused as to something i think if I get a, if I get the look at Will's hand correctly, that might be another ultimatum. I can't quite tell. There's a card in the middle. Looks like a spell. Oh yeah, Will's that's hard. Yeah, I, I guess Kruger played with his hand face up on the table, and that's what we thought. There was only the, those two cards. It right. wasn't actually his hand. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, that he did have a couple long. spells left over. That was just the the cards that Jesse knew about. All right, and this is 
it I I wonder if Jesse has just two mana, so something like the Stainful Stroke here is going to be really strong. Yeah, this Hope Tender is going to untap two lands with the Exert. And he is the, that is the other ultimatum. So it yeah. looks like no counterspell from Jesse. So we are resolving ultimatum. Now, this is the part where we start vibing because we got to figure mm -hmm. out can Will actually win this game without any copies of Hidden Strings? Um, I don't really know what the plan is here, but I'm sure, you know, Will's played this deck a ton, is very well versed in this, and I'm sure he knows he, he's got a plan in mind. Um, but we're, we might, this is the, the part of the stream where we just start vibing a little bit. Yeah. So my, my brain is churning. I'm thinking. So you can grab Omniscience. That okay. one always gets taken, right? But that one at least guarantees your other two because mana is the choke point because we don't have hand strings anymore. We can grab Leer. That lets us use a pour over the pages again. And so it looks like Dark Petition, something, and then Peer into the Abyss. I think that's an Omniscience. Is that right? again, it's like, it's, it, I mean, maybe it's possible Kruger has the omniscience in hand and or cyborg out, but I'm going to guess it's omniscience. That does I make that a sense. Lear, I think. But yeah, Lear huh. wouldn't make a ton of sense, right? Because if you go, you just give Will Lear petition. Yeah, right. Well, if you give the two black cards. Yeah, I was going to say, but the thing about Lear is you have all the poor over the pages in the graveyard. So then you actually go up a mana each time, which maybe sure. matters. I'm not actually sure. Kruger's counting his deck here. I. I imagine, once again, I am not a Lotus Field expert. I would guess you want to cast the draw spell before the Dark Petition um, because then you can know what you don't have in your hand to fill out what you're missing. But this might be a situation where Kruger has to start Dark Petition, uh, appearing Jesse. I I'm not actually sure. I Looks, looks like, like we are going to draw first. Peer, peer yourself. And you want to stack them so that you peer first and then resolve the petition because you get to see what cards you find off of the peer and then you get to know what you need off the petition. So good st good stacking there from Will. Um, but yeah, it seems really difficult to be able to generate enough mana here without the hidden strings. And like you said, we've already gone through a couple of pours as well. So if your plan is to, to peer Jesse a bunch, I don't really know how you get there with, you know, we have access to eight mana right now. Hope Tanner has already been exerted. So no mana there, you know, peers could, or excuse me, uh, pores could potentially be plus one mana. This is, this is going to be tough. I solved it. I figured what? it out. It's a comma. So you have to play as a comma and then okay. the untaps your lands. Then you can disenchant the fable, disenchant the fable, shoot down the tokens, block and gain life. Oh, okay. Like, so we're just, we're, we're not going to combo. We're just going to Zakama beat down. I, I think, yeah, I think we have to use a common and use it as a board wipe and then hope that 9 9 can go the distance against Jesse. I mean, there might be an actual way to combo, but I was just doing the math here and it looks to me like as long as Kruger had one chance to untap a land, oh. he can play it, float the mana, and just start activating Zakama's abilities. I missed that Vizier can untap Hope Tender. That's more mana. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hope Tender is really good in this okay. deck. As we did draw, okay, we've got Omniscience. That's going to make it so. All right, there, the mana floating does matter for Zakama. Um, looks like they're moving it to the side there. Uh, if, if the mana comes up, Kruger's probably the second up to know. We're probably going to see him float mana that is stuff for Zakama. So, for example, we might see red get floated here in case he needs to do that um, from an untapped effect. But that's what we should be good. Okay, so now let's go through the math here. Three Balagad recoveries from hand. That's poor that's poor three times. Now we said we needed to cast poor six Peer. times. Is that what we're talking about? Or Pierce. Sorry, yeah, so, Peer. So yeah, the, that's from 20 Peer. life. So that's just at 16. So we put her to eight. We put her to four. We put her to two. We put her to one. We put her to zero. So we need five Pierce right now to kill five. Jesse. Okay. Yes. And we can cast three essentially for free if we have all three recoveries. But then we need to find mana to then cast the recoveries because we need to get to go cast three recoveries, cast, you know, peer three, three times there. And then you go leer from hand, but then you need mana to cast the recovery from the graveyard because omniscience is only from your hand. Yes. Let's think we have a Masaju. The thing about if they played a land this turn, I think right now is the question. I don't know if we can help. The answer is Kruger hasn't. I don't know if we're allowed to do that. No coverage is allowed to step in and stuff. Kruger last turn had the three lands in play. Oh, I think I know what happened. Chat saying that he cast a Sylvan scrying and just put like, was doing a little bit too fast, put a card into his hand, but didn't reveal it. And it was the Basaju. Oh, sure. Yeah, that is awkward. Didn't catch it there. Um, 
We'll let the judges take care of that, though. That's what judges yep. are for. That's why we hire them. That's why we have them learn events. That's why they're so pivotal magic. We're so happy to have people that spend so much time learning the rules of the game to help us out. We're going to see what happens here, though. But, yeah, I, I so thinking about sort of the combo kill where we were before, I, I'm trying to think more. Uh, Joe, Joe, message me on Facebook. Let me know if we're missing something here. <laughs> help me out, dog. Throw me a bone. But I, I think that it is the comma – is the only way unless we have exactly enough balagets and mana to untap and do everything. But I think without hidden strings, getting the extra mana is just too rough because we used some viziers earlier in the game. I could be mistaken here. Well, yeah, that's true. Is there like a backdoor line where you could go? <sighs> no, I was gonna say no. That's too much mana. I was gonna say I cast vizier from the graveyard and bounce it somehow because you actually get a discount on Odawara with the leer but it's only a one mana discount. So you go like three mana, pick up Vizier. Then you still need two mana to untap the hope tender, which then exerts the Lotus field. I don't know. There's, just, there's a lot of numbers here and a lot of math in my brain. I'm, I'm, my brain is melting right now. I can't, I just can't handle this. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure either. I am looking up something right now. To see. Oh, but the pores, the pores are plus one. So we the have sorry, okay. So we need to cast the the recoveries. Go ahead. Uh, no, you're, no, you go. You go. So I was gonna say we need to cast the recoveries from the graveyard only twice. Which actually we just have enough mana, right? We just go leer from hand for free, recovery from hand, get back peer, peer Jesse, recovery from hand, get back peer, peer Jesse, recovery from hand. That's three, and then all you need to do from there is six more mana to go three mana recovery from the graveyard peer, three mana recovery from the graveyard peer. And that's five peers, which should be enough, right? I'm missing something. That. I, I, it sounds right when you're saying it, but do I know if it's true? Who knows? I mean, it, what, what you said is correct. It's five, assuming we have the math correct on peer, right? Because sixteen divided by two is eight, and then four, and then two, and then one, and then you have you have the lethal one. So that is five. Yeah, just did my little finger math. So we're just cat. I mean, this might just be a situation where Kruger is just missing a Balagets recovery. He didn't play any as a land this game, right? So they didn't get exiled and sacked in Lotus Field. Yeah, it's and I feel like we can kind of assume that Jesse probably does not have counter magic because that likely would have been fired off at the ultimatum and likely doesn't have Basaju because that would have already been fired off at the omniscience after the omniscience had been cast. Well, after the first spell had been cast off the omniscience. So if you're in will spot, you can probably safely assume that Jesse doesn't have any, any backstops here, right? Well, that's you. Lear also makes it so spells can't be countered. Sure. That's a good point. Yeah. So, so Kruger knows he is in a spot where Besage was the one thing he kind of needed to fade, and he faded that. So unless Jesse's doing some insano sicko soul read play, uh, <laughs> oh wait, Jesse draws cards off Pier. She could draw the Besage. Oh right, right, saying. right. Okay, that's what. That's we're why Kruger's gotcha. blowing up the treasures, and now Jesse has to float mana because Jesse. Wait, but Jesse, Jesse has the Besage. She has the carry added with the yeah, with the play. Gigantha. So Kruger so, has to have Poseidon be in the last cards in Jesse's deck. Can Will Odawara the Gigantha to stop the discount on Poseidon? Oh, he can. Holy, what a ability. Looks like they're checking it too. Oh my goodness. God, this oh. this is this is too much. <laughs> and that's why Kruger was doing it. And that's why this is still going. Kruger's trying to think, okay, I have to set up to beat the Poseidon. And this is why Will Kruger not only is one of the best players on our circuit, one of the masters of the Lotus Field deck, because he just knew this was something he had to do. He's done this so much. He's played this deck so much. He knew he had to be able to beat the Basaju from Jesse's deck. And now Jesse also, you know, draws a bunch of cards. There might be something in there that could matter. And now, you know, responses back are on. Like we said before, counter spells, not live because of Lear, but Basaju and things like it are. Oh, and Jesse's – oh, never mind. She can't do that. I don't know. I don't know about you, Basin, but this is way too complicated. Can we just can we just go back to approach? <laughs> I was kind of interested in the Abyss version because I was like, oh, that solves a lot of my problems. But now I've watched these games that I don't know if yeah. my little brain can handle it. It is too cute and smooth. Oh man, I would need like an actual spreadsheet to play the second paper. There's there's no way. Oh, there's a binding. Okay, binding matter. Oh wait. Okay, so binding 
can it kind of the... matters, but there's a still Besaju access, right? For Will. Well, so the thing is though, is there's the Terra Sunder in the graveyard. I don't know. Did we use mm -hmm. two Terra Sunders or did we cast one from the yard? Because Kruger can cast as an instant. Oh, we'll have like the Odawara anyways. Okay. Odawar, okay. So wow. it looks like that's gonna cause it there. And it looks like Jesse is going to pick up her cards and concede. Guess she didn't have the Besaju there. That is I mean, so crazy. I that was one of the wildest games we have ever seen here on the the energy series. I, I am shook. I don't even know what just happened. <laughs> uh, listen, that's going to be the last round for Devin and I. Our brains are exhausted. I can only imagine being Will Kruger right now. He's still got to play more Magic, and there's more Magic to be played. So make sure to stick around real quick here. But we're going to have Joe Lissette and Dom Harvey take you all home for the last three rounds of Swiss, and then the entirety of our top eight today. Thank you all so much for having me on the stream. I'm happy to have myself, and I think the same goes for Devin here. Yeah, I had an absolute blast. Appreciate the appreciate the opportunity to commentate. Uh, love the games, and it's uh, it's always been it's always a good time. We'll see you all later. So we'll be right back with some more magic.